One of the features of the mind reading model proposed by Baron Cohen is that it provides an explanation of some of the most salient aspects of autism. What is autism? According to Uta Frith, autism is a neurodevelopmental condition characterized by issues in social development, such as reciprocal interaction and communication, whether verbal or nonverbal, as well as by repetitive activities and narrow interests. Autism is not a single unitary condition, but rather a spectrum. Hence, we speak of the autism spectrum. Autism can be accompanied by cognitive disabilities, some of them very severe, as in the classical cases of autism studied by pioneers like Kanner, but it can also be accompanied by astonishing strengths in other areas, as shown by some individuals with Asperger's syndrome. According to Baron Cohen, id and ed are usually preserved in autism. For instance, autistic children spontaneously use volitional verbs like want, and they are able to determine gaze direction and to detect when other people are looking at them. He also claims that TED might function in autistic children, but in any case it is delayed. However, Sam, and especially Tom, are usually affected. With respect to Sam, children with autism usually do not show all the signs associated with joint attention. They do not show gaze monitoring, nor do they try to direct the visual attention of others by means of gestures. It's not that they can't point at all. They can point to request objects, for instance. But unlike typical children, they don't use pointing just for the sake of influencing someone else's attention or to establish shared interest. He puts it in these words. In most children with autism, Sam does not appear to be working in any modality, vision, touch, or addition. By and large, they bring an object over to someone, or point an object out, or lead someone to an object, and place the person's hand on it, only when they want the person to operate that object or get it from them. This is not shared attention in any sense. These behaviors are merely instrumental and do not indicate a desire to share interest with another person for its own sake. Thus, according to Baron Cohen, deficits in joint attention in autism are caused by an impairment in SAM, with the consequence that triadic representations cannot be built in any modality. This has the further consequence that there is no input for Tom to be triggered. Baron Cohen proposes that autistic people are delayed in their development of Sam and Tom, and that this renders them, to some extent, mind-blind. Hence, the 1994 theory is sometimes referred to as the mind-blindness theory of autism. As a consequence, autistic people find other people's behavior confusing and unpredictable, even frightening. One of the pieces of evidence that autistic children have a compromised theory of mind mechanism comes from their lack of spontaneous pretend play. As we saw earlier, the typical two-year-old engages in pretend play, using their mind-reading skills to be able to understand that in the other person's mind, they're just pretending. Baron Cohen reports that children in the autism spectrum show less pretend play, and that when they do, their pretense is more rigid and limited. Moreover, there is evidence that their understanding of the axioms of the theory of mind is rather shaky. For instance, the typical three-year-old child can pass the seeing list to knowing test, which requires understanding that merely touching a box is not enough to know what's inside. Children with autism and Asperger's syndromes are delayed in this. Children in the autistic spectrum also have difficulty understanding epistemic states. We know that the typical four-year-old child passes the false belief test, recognizing when someone else has a mistaken belief about the world. However, most children with autism spectrum are delayed in passing this test. Moreover, Deception is easily understood by the typical four-year-old child, but children in the spectrum tend to assume everybody is telling the truth, and may be shocked by the idea that other people may not say what they mean. Autistic children also have problems with understanding politeness. The typical nine-year-old can figure out what might hurt another's feelings, and what might therefore be better left unspoken. Children with Asperger's syndrome are delayed by around three years in this skill, despite their normal IQ. The typical nine-year-old can interpret another person's expressions from their eyes to figure out what they might be thinking or feeling, whereas autistic children tend to find that more difficult. That doesn't mean that all autistic people will forever lack all aspects of mentalizing. Some high-functioning autistic people are able to train themselves to recognize other people's mental states through the use of their general intellectual capacities. However, despite such impressive compensatory strategies, it is still the case that mentalizing does not come as naturally to them as it comes to typical people. Recent literature gives us an illustration. In Mark Haddon's novel, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, the main character is an Asperger boy called Christopher, who sets out to solve the murder of a neighbor's dog. 
Christopher loves solving puzzles, and in various parts of the book he describes the difficulties he has with reading social signals. But he also says how he manages to deal with those difficulties. Here's an excerpt. My main teacher was called Julie. And one day Julie sat down at a desk next to me and put a tube of Smarties on the desk. And she said, Christopher, what do you think is in here? And I said, Smarties. Then she took the top of the Smarties tube and turned it upside down. And a little red pencil came out and she laughed and I said, it's not Smarties, it's a pencil. Then she put the little red pencil back inside the Smarties tube and put the top back on. Then she said, if your mommy came in now and we asked her what was inside the Smarties tube, what do you think she would say? And I said, a pencil. That was because when I was little, I didn't understand about other people's having minds. And Julie said to mother and father that I would always find this very difficult. But I don't find this difficult now, because I decided that it was a kind of puzzle. And if something is a puzzle, there is always a way of solving it.